Welcome back to this video tutorial. We can consider some program examples to understand the structure concept properly. Okay, so here it is a program example in which we have a structure with name student. And the student structure with members are a character array s name for representing the name of student and this integer variable SID indicate the identification number of student like roll number and this floating point variables m1, m2, m3 used for representing three different subjects mark of a student. This total variable is used for accumulating the sum of these three marks. So this is about the template of our student structure, right? So consider this one. This is the structure variable declaration. Struct student stud1 comma stud2. What is the meaning? Here it declared two different structure variable. Instead of a single structure variable, here it declared two different structure variable. One is stud1, another is stud2. Right. What happened while uh, executing this particular statement? While executing, it declare while declaring this stud one, it allocate different memory space for uh, representing the name of the first student, student one, the ID of the first student, and three different marks of the first student, and a space for allocating the total of these three different marks. So in this memory. While declaring the student 1, what happened? Suppose for representing uh, an integer value, suppose uh, that here it takes 2 bytes of memory. Okay, so this SID indicate 2 consecutive free memory bytes. And SName need how many bytes? 20 consecutive bytes. And M1 is a float. Suppose for a floating type value, it takes 4 consecutive bytes of memory location. And for M2, suppose here it again require another 4 consecutive bytes of memory. And for M3 also, it takes another 4 consecutive bytes of memory. Right. And this total, again a floating point type variable takes another 4 consecutive bytes of memory. So, while declaring a single structure student variable stud1, it allot this much amount of memory space. 2 bytes for SID, 20 bytes for SName, 4 bytes for each of these M1, M2, M3 and total. All these set together indicate our student1. That means this much memory allocations are comes under this particular variable stud1. Right, so this stood one dot m one actually pointing to this particular memory allocation. Stood one dot total actually pointing to this particular memory allocation. Stood one dot name actually pointing to this particular memory allocation. Right, so here here it is two structure variable declare declaration. Right, here it declared two different structure variable. One is stood one, another is stood two. What happened while declaring such two different structure variables? Here it allowed separate group of memory space for the other variable also. That means at uh, 2 bytes for this SID, 20 bytes for this SName, 4 bytes for this M1, M2, M3 and total. All together this group of memory allocations are represented using the second structure variables to 2. Okay, so these group of memory allocations are represented using this name, structure variable name stood 1 and these group of memory allocations are represented using the second structure variable stood 2. Okay, so stood 1 dot s name actually pointing to this location. This 20 consecutive bytes are pointed by this stood 1 dot s name. And stood two dot is name pointing to these twenty consecutive bytes of memory. That means the name of our second student. Stood one dot m one actually pointing to this memory space. 
and stood one dot sorry stood two dot m one pointing to this consecutive four points. Okay, so by declaring a structure variable, it allot memory space for each of these members separately and from and form here a group of memory allocation. One for one group for the student one and the another group for the student two. And this each group constitute a same amount of memory allocation. Two bytes here, twenty bytes here, four byte for this M1, four byte for M2, four for this M3, four for this total. The same amount of memory allocation also required for our second structured variable also. Okay, so this is the syntax of our memory allocation. While executing this particular structure variable declaration statement in background, it allot this amount of memory space here in our system memory. Okay, now this is for uh, initializing various memory spaces. First one is for uh, initializing the SID of our first student. That is stood one dot SID pointing to this location. Use in this two bytes we can store the first integer number entered from our keyboard. Second, the name read from read from our keyboard is initialized here, and the three different marks read from our uh, that are uh, read from our keyboard is initialized into stood one dot M one stood one dot M one pointing to here. So store here. Stood one dot m two pointing to this particular memory allocation. We can store the second mark here, and stood one dot m three pointing to here. We can store that third value here. And again, we can read the details of our second student. We can read value from. We can read the value from our keyboard and initialize the set of memory also. The name of uh, ID of second student, name of second student, three different mark of our second student, and after that, consider this one statement: stud one dot total equal to stud one dot m one plus stud one dot m two plus stud one dot m three. What is the meaning? Stud one dot total means this particular memory allocation, which is initialized with the sum of these three initialized mark value. Stud one dot m one plus stud one dot m two plus stud one dot m three is calculated. That value is assigned to stud one dot total. That is, that means the sum is assigned here. And similarly, sum of these three marks stud two dot m one plus stud two dot m two plus stud two dot m three is assigned to here stud two dot total. That is here in this particular memory allocation. Okay, so this is the case of declaring two different structure variables. That means, so uh, keep this point in your mind while creating multiple structure variables. It allot separate group of memories uh, spaces for different structure variables like this. Okay, now we can consider the program for this particular uh, example. Okay. So this is the program. So the same st student structure, the two student structure variable, and here it uh, read the uh, read and initialize the name, ID, marks of two different students. That is using stud one dot s i d stud one dot s name. So consider the syntax of this string. Uh, This particular statement, scan of statement. Using the scan of statement, we can read a uh, name of our first student. We don't want to use this ampersand symbol here because the character array, the name of the character array, always pointing to the starting address of our character. That means the first character of our character array. The name of our character array always pointing to the starting address. So this is the syntax of reading a string from keyboard using scan of statement. We don't want to use the ampersand symbol here. Okay, we need to use the name of the array. Uh, we need to use simply the name of the array without using the ampersand symbol here. 
scan of percentage as without ampersand specify the name of our character array this is enough in case of reading a, a string from keyboard using the scanner right so after reading and initializing our first student details we can read and initialize the second student details and finally we can uh, find out the total of our two student total marks of our two students and initialize the total uh, field of our memory then finally we can display the details of our uh, students in a tabular form okay first here it display the column header sid s name m1 m2 m3 and total this form the column header of our table then we can, in each row we can display the name id name three different mark and total of first student id name three different marks and total of our second student in the other row okay so this is a program we can display now okay i'm going to enter the name uh, sorry id of first student as one name uh, as a and three different mark one two three and we need to enter the second student id put as two name is put as b mark as four three two okay so here it display the result in the tabular form SID of first student one and second student two each present each row represent the details of each of the student one a the name of a student a mark one one two three this uh, decimal point because this m1 m2 m3 and total are declared as plotting point type variable that is why this decimal part and some value of this three mark and in the next row it indicate name sorry id name three different mark of our student and finally the total is initialized with some of these three marks right so this is the case of declaring two different structure variable in a single statement that is struct student student one comma student two okay the same syntax this one is valid we can to use this syntax also that is stood one comma stood two this one also valid okay we can follow this one or this one both are valid cases okay